um, all right, I think that's what I can really derive from what um, Ipa uh, uh, Peter Oduwari had said. Uh, this is not supposed to be a topic, please, my brother. Uh, well, I don't know what he you are referring to, Prince Old um, Gregory uh, Daniel. Uh, I don't know what you referred that to that. But what I was saying as regards the Obazola being killed, I'm not a propagandist. I don't get involved in ethnic um, rivalries and all of that. Uh, a lot of people ask me that question. I wanted to just proffer solutions to it. Well, I don't think that it is what discussing basically that um, uh, Obazola. Obazola truly I'm not sure from history whether it's convenient for some of our people or whether it's not convenient for some of our people. Obazola was truly shot with a deadly poisonous arrow at Uzea and um, he didn't die at Esanland he died at um, Ewa and then um, was buried at Obe. All right, was buried at Obe. All right. Um, but people could take pride in that part of our history, but really do not know the preceding history before what had transpired of um, Obazola. To be sincere, Obazola was not is not my is not an oba that I really like because of his um because he never really understood brotherhood. I would not I would not um I would not blame him that too much because at the time Obazola became the Oba of Benin, Benin had already become a republican city. Had already become a republican city. Don't forget, after Obaiwai the first died, uh, Ezoti became Oba. He didn't. He, 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 he reigned for seven days. He passed on Ulua. Obaiwai didn't reign for long. Then they tried to install Princess Deleyo and all of that. Then he took the Benins were left without Oba. People don't talk about that story for about three years before Zobana accepted. By the time he came, the people who fought war with his father, the likes of uh, Inekiridi of Ebelaka, uh, this powerful warlord at um, and the man that almost defeated uh, uh, the man that almost defeated um, Obasolo at um, Egma, one of the Enogi of Egma. Uh, we have um, Eriaria, uh, uh, who is not named after Eriaria. We had I uh, we had Akinisi, we had uh, Izuku, we had we had um, Ovaoto, Nigeduma. We had warlords that fought. Okay, Okwai was no longer alive at that time. We had warlords that fought during the time of his father. So when he became the Oba, he had those warlords already creating territories within the empire for themselves as the king. So he needed to conquer them so that they can be subservient to him. All right, the two most difficult of the wars that he fought, the three most difficult wars that he fought was with the Iriaria, a woman. Um, okay, he also fought with Ise, Ise no Yutekon. He fought with Egma. He almost lost that war with Egma. The most difficult was in Nekiridi, Nobelaka. Then after he had conquered all of those wars, he was able to re-augment the Benin Empire as it were. He was fearsome. He didn't... By nature, he wasn't interested in peace. He was always interested in war. He wasn't interested in peace, he was interested in war. All right, at that point in time, he wanted to, he wanted to fight every other place. So he had asked a question, where 
I have fought every war fightable. I have fought every war fightable. Where is the place that I will have to fight that I will lose? He was told Uziah. Why? You must understand the story. The Edo people must open their ears to open the story. I, I talked about the precedence of history that led to his defeat at Uzia. Two things defeated Ozolo at Uzia. It has nothing to do with Esan people. It was already predestined that he would lose that war. When Obai Wai the first had lost, I've said, I think I've talked about this story, this history before. When Obai Wai the first had lost two of his sons, the same day, Zuwara and Koboiwa, he couldn't sire other children. He couldn't sire other children. All right, until a, a medicine man who came from Uzia gave medicine for him to sire the three other sons that they, all of the three other sons eventually became the others of the name Ezoti, Olua, and him. Now, when they when they give him the medicine, when they give Obaiwa the first medicine to give birth to Prince of Bani, and every rain fell. I've said the story a thousand times, and every rain failed. And the Uzia native doctor gave a prophecy to obey why the first that whoever son that he uses this medicine to side to give birth to will one day in the future wage war against Uzia people and he will defeat the Uzia people obey why the first was not comfortable with the verdict and the prophecy of the native daughter that had made it him that had made it possible for him to give birth to his later children so by way made a prophecy at that instant and he said any of my son that dare wage war against those their people for the gift that those their people are giving to me by making it possible through one of their sons for i to give birth to other sons he will go Never return to Benin. So there was a prophecy of death by Y upon any of his children that dare wage war against Uzia. So the fate of Ozola was sealed that day. It has nothing to do with the Uzia people. Ozola waged more war than his father. He had only one nickname, Nibao Miekon, the conqueror. He fought more war than even his father, Ewai the first. To be truth, over fought more war than Obai Wai the first, nicknamed Ugidigan. He was called Nibao Miekon, the conqueror. Onibao Mi. There was already an instant prophecy against him as to what will happen. So at the time of Azola became a warlord, had fought more wars, had fought several wars. He had won all of those wars. He came and said, One of his jesters told him. Iyi no nera ye wa iya ye do uga yuzia umi umuya ye do ina se ye ra yuzia ye rare. It was just a matter of pride. He had said, "I will go to Uzia and come." He had asked because of his high-handedness that where would I go? I fought all wars. I've seen it all. I've conquered it all. 
Where would I go that I know that the war would be difficult for me to fight because I need to fight more war? Every other war that I fought were very easy for me to fight. And someone told him, the jester, one of his jesters in the, in the royal courts told him that there's a prophecy that if you go to Uzia, you will not come back. And I said, that is the kind of war. I love that kind of challenge. I want to go there and see whether I will go and I will return back. On his way with his soldiers, when he got to a war, there was a powerful prophet, oh, um, priestess, not prophet, sorry. There was a powerful priestess and told you, and that told him, Ozora, Ene Yuzia, Ewa Kumwei, Uga Yuzia, Wumi Uya Sedu. A powerful priestess already are told of Ozora that his umbilical cord was taken from Benin because of the prophecy his father had had many years back to be planted at Uzia that if any of his sons ever dare, in short, Ezoti, uh, Olua, um, Ozola, umbilical cords were all planted at Uzia. They were never planted in Benin to ensure that the prophecy of their father that any of his sons dare to carry war to Uzia, they will never come back. Ozola took that war out of every entreaties not to go he went to Uzia. he fought that war and he won according to the prophecy of the of the medicine man the native daughter that this son will come to my land and conquer me two prophecies were presided one by the native daughter he said that he will come and conquer this is what our essence brothers will never talk about Ozola went there one that was squarely, but there was another counterproductive prophecy that said he would never return. At the height of his victory, listen, at the height of his victory, suddenly his soldiers that have stood by him and fought with him for decades, for years, grew weary, grew annoyed of the incessant war that was all last fought all the years war that were uncalled for wars that were not necessary wars that were not uh, important and they said that if we keep on if we have this king to keep on ruling over this vast empire we will continue to fight war for the rest of our lives instead some of the some of the warriors of obazola plotted a coup i know i never said that if i get to this point of history i would just eat time for but let me just go ahead and say there's nothing big deal planted a coup with the uzair warriors and told him that ozola by nature is a very strong medicine man nothing can ever defeat him that is because of um, a wu I can't remember in Edo Tien no Muyo. It's the the, the, the the clothes that he put on is well saturated with medicine that nothing can defeat him. But his weakest point is that where he whenever he takes Egonoyakwe, whenever he wants to take his bath, that is his weakest point. At that point, he will pull off all of this medicine that protects him from losing he said by the time he's about to take they were telling the user words that were fleeing from the war from the war zone that at the point he's about to take that back because it is the weakest point he will fortify his military troop five times over because he knows it's, it's his weakening, it is at his weakest point. And there is a particular drum that the Benin warriors will play. And when they play it, that is, he's about to take his bat. So every of his military officers must be at alert because they know that is when their king is at his weakest point. He said, at that time, when you hear this, they told, they showed them. They, they, they sort of described or explained the sound 
of the drum, how it sounds like to the fleeing Uzia warriors. That at that time, when you hear that sound, that is when you will strike. And that's exactly what happened. Ozola was about to take his bat, that band was played, Uzia warrior had approached. Now, most of the people, the warriors that were supposed to protect Obazola had betrayed him. All right, betrayed him. There was already an extant prophecy that said that he would not come back. All right, at the time they had allowed the Uzia warrior, one of the Uzia warrior, to shoot a deadly arrow that penetrated his skin. He was shot with a poisonous deadly arrow, but he never died at Uzia. So they knew when he was shot that he would not survive that shot. They ensure that he doesn't survive it. They had to quickly rush him down to Benin. On their way to Benin, exactly when they got to Ira, exactly where the woman, the prophet, sorry, the priestess had made that same prof that same prophecy, I told him. Otonariore. He died. And he was brought to Benin. I was buried amongst his forefathers. So, which I feel it happened, yes, it was the people are shocked over Ozova with a poisonous arrow that led to his death. We never have denied that history. It is not a shame for us. There was already a prophecy by his father that it will happen. So it is not a shame for us. But if some of our people misguided people now rub it in our face that they defeated one of our kings i don't see it as a big deal because the oba of Benin was also their oba so they are defeated their own oba so i don't i take all of those things as frivolities of history they don't catch my intentions because they are never really important so we shouldn't be carried away shouldn't be carried away by the frivolities of history. I haven't said this something. I said it was your people. We shouldn't be carried away by the frivolities of history. They are not important. If anybody sees that they are important and they defeated Obazola, oh, oh well, that's not a big deal. So that means they defeated one of their own. It's not a big deal. To me, it's not a big deal. So, so you, you win some, so, well, it wasn't a war that was lost. He was betrayed by his own soldiers and referred to the caprices of his own high handedness. And that's what played that. Otherwise, why would he have waged war against his own people in the first place? Well, if he did, and he had a judgment of his own ancestors, and so be it. <clears throat> I don't think that is even important. That is even anything that any adult person should. Uh, grovel about or be sour about. Even Barbarame was also defeated, so there's nothing to grovel about. Alright, so it's not anything for us to grovel about. So, to me, I, or an issue that are not important to me, I know, I just feel they are not. Me. But since it was asked, I needed to just throw some light on that. So that, that that's what played that. That's what played that. Uh, okay, I've been talking for an hour, sixteen minutes. <clears throat> so that's what played that. So it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It shouldn't be a big deal. So, if any of you want to come and talk, just let me know so I can bring you all so that you can say one or two. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I, don't, I don't want to disagree. I don't want to disagree with um, what your father told you, Miss Prince Obi. And so I was in your village, your community today, Wamoma, actually. 
I was in your community today a warm moment. Uh, you know. Uh, why am I to you know I wanted to establish one of my estates there. I wanted to establish one of my estates there. So but maybe you and I will talk later, Prince okay. Okay.